So we left off about where you had the car body, and I know a few of you have gone on and gotten further than this, okay? One thing we have to do on the top of our car body is we need to drill a hole for the place we're going to put the dowel rod in to connect the motor to, all right? So for the drawing, I'm going to put a sketch on the top. Now, some of you have a curved surface on the top, and it might work better if you have a flat spot on the bottom to put your center point on the bottom and just drill the hole all the way through. For the hole, put it somewhere close to the middle of the car. We can alter it a little bit when we get down to the shop, but somewhere close to the middle is a good guideline because it's all about balance, okay? When we put the fan in, we can point the blades forward or backwards, and then we can change the polarity of the way the electricity flows through it so they spin one way or they spin the other way to get your car to go, okay? So right now, really, we're just kind of going to put a point here, and I'm just going to line it up. See how my dotted lines are lining it up right in the middle? I'm just going to click it there. If you need to dimension it from one edge to the point, it would be 1.25 because that's the middle. That's half of 2.5, right? So once I have that, then it's just like making any other hole that you guys have done. You finish your sketch. You go hole. The size of this hole is 0.125. Some of you might have done 0.13, that's fine, okay? And then just do it all the way through. You probably won't drill it all the way through, real world, but that's what we'll do for here, okay? Now the hole's in there. I'm going to save that. And the next thing I need to do is draw a plywood, or not plywood, but a balsa wood base that's going to fit on the bottom of the car, okay? So I want to... Before I leave this, I'm going to go back to my first sketch, and I want to see just how long my car is because I want my base to be the same length. Some of you will have an exact number. I kind of didn't draw my entire box out, so I've got to do a little bit of math. My entire car is 5.5 long, but it's .226 from the front, so it's not quite there. Some of you might not need to do that. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So I need to draw the base, so I need a new standard IPT, and create my sketch. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I said I need a 5.5 long minus .226. Everybody's going to be different here, right? I just typed it into Inventor, let Inventor do the math. and. The height or the thickness, we're going to go with 0.25, one fourth of an inch. So there's my base. How far do I need to extrude it? How thick are all the cars? 2.5. So I'm going 2.5. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to give it the appearance of wood. I don't care which kind you choose. Simple. When I save it, I'm going to save it as wooden base. And I apologize. I thought I had just set the default, but apparently I didn't. I already saved one last hour, so I'm not going to finish up. But make sure everything's saved into the same place. If you need help getting your default set, let me know. All right? Mine's already saved, so I'm not going to save another one. Okay? That's all you have to draw. Everything else you should have copied from my iDrive in that maglev parts folder to start your assembly. Okay? Uh, and it looked like my copy uh, didn't work either, but we'll see. All right? So when I go through here, now I want to start a new assembly. Standard IAM. The first part I want to bring in is the main body of the car. Nope, there's my parts, so I'm good. So I want to bring in the body of the car. I only want one of them, so I'm just going to right-click OK. Then I want to bring in one plywood base, wooden base, excuse me. Left-click, right-click, OK. I'm going to do this first, and then I'll bring in the magnets and the whole motor in a minute, OK? 
For a lot of you, this is a brand new constraint that you haven't done before. Because my wheels on the bottom here are rounded, I can't just do a mate to those wheels. I could mate the flat part of the base to the flat part of the bottom of the car here and then do like an offset and make it work. So if that makes sense to you, you can do that. But I'm going to show you using a tangent constraint, which is something new for us, okay? So constraint, looking at that picture, does it kind of make sense with what we're doing, right? We want the edge of a circle to touch one point of the line. That's basically what tangent means. So I'm going to select tangent, this flat surface, and a lot of times you can get away with just doing one of the wheels as long as they're on the same plane or the same line. Okay, so I do that and I click apply. I need a couple more constraints to keep this thing from moving. Basically what I want to do is I want to flush the front to the front and the side to the side. So I'm going to switch over to mate, flush, side, side and then front to front. Almost everybody has a flat side so that works great because we didn't do a cutout top view. Some people have a rounded front or a rounded back and that makes that part a little bit more difficult and I can help you with that if we can't find a flat edge. Okay, So that's good. Now I want to come back and bring in my magnets. I need four of those. So if you scroll through this folder you copied over of mine. One, two, three, four, right click, OK. And let's go ahead and bring in the whole motor and prop assembly. This one, sometimes people mess up and they don't bring in the whole thing. So make sure you find the assembly file. We want the motor holder and prop. And I only want one, so I'm going to left click, right click, OK. Magnets are pretty simple. We'll do one of those first. All four of them are the same, so I won't waste your time doing all four, OK? It's a mate, then a flush, then a flush. So I'm going to go constrain, a mate, we'll slap those two together, right? So I apply it. Now I want to go switch it over to flush, and I want that edge, flush with that edge. Makes sense, right? Now what else do I need to flush? So now, <coughs> that is locked into place. If I grab it, it won't move. Okay? And the last thing we've got to do then is we've got to get our motor in the top. Okay? So what constraint do you suppose I will use? Insert. Insert, Insert correct. Now, everybody will be a little different on this. We'll probably put an offset on here, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go to Insert. There's the hole. The motor holder. Okay? Now, what I want to have happen is I don't want this to be super, super tall above the car. I also don't want it so low that the propellers run into your car. So like I said, everybody will be a little bit different probably depending on the shape of your car. But I'm going to start out by trying to point negative 7, 5. See how it dropped it down. So mess with yours until you think it looks pretty good. Okay? I'm going to apply that. Now, this still moves. And we don't want that to happen. Alright? So another new constraint that you haven't learned before that we're going to use is an angle constraint. And what I want to do, this is your angle constraint. I don't care if it points forwards or backwards. That's kind of up to you, all right? 
I need to find two flat surfaces. So first, I'm going to find a flat surface on the back of the motor, and then a flat surface on the back of the car. You could use your base if you need to, if you have a rounded car, once we've got that locked in, okay? So, what I want to do, let's see what happens if I type in, excuse me, let me do that. Notice where it flipped to it at zero degrees, it's pointing to the front. So what if I want it to go the other way? What am I going to type in? 180. 180. Very nice. You apply that. Now you're locked into place. Now you save your assembly. you can work your way through all of your title blocks that are also in that folder and you can start doing all that stuff. You guys good with that? Mm -hmm. All right.